Well, welcome to Gateway Church. We are so glad that you're here this weekend. It is such a special weekend here at Gateway because we are celebrating water baptisms. And I'm outside right now at the South Lake campus. We're getting ready. So whether you're in the building, if you're watching online, at a gathering, at a prison campus, we're so glad you're joining us. We thought it would be amazing if we joined in together at the beginning of service to celebrate someone getting baptized. So do me a favor, let's get ready. Let's celebrate Ashley today who's decided to get baptized. this weekend to get baptized we have everything you need so after service come outside we have hamburgers hot dogs it's going to be a celebration but let's pray and get ready for worship father thank you for this weekend thank you for being good come inhabit the praises of your people in jesus name amen let's worship i've got joy in the morning joy in the evening you keep me dancing in every
May every eye and every heart be fixed upon the face of Jesus. O oh, Son of Man and the great I am, you're the one we're seeking. Whom have we in heaven but our King? Jesus, the Lord of Lords is named Jesus. Be still, my soul, be still and know that the King is on his throne. It's all gonna be okay. It's all gonna be okay. I've read the final page, and the spirit and the bride say, Come, Lord, come, Lord. Even so, Lord Jesus, come, come, Lord, come. Even so, Lord Jesus, comes. Even so, even so, even so, Lord Jesus, come. Cause I just want you and nothing else, and nothing else, and nothing else will do. God, I just want you and nothing else, you and nothing else, and nothing else will do, I just want you and nothing else, Jesus, and nothing else.
nothing else will do. Thank you, Lord.
Jesus stands before the disciples and he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through me. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Philip in the story, I imagine him raising his hand at this part and he goes, Lord, show us the Father if it is, and it is sufficient. And Jesus responds with a question and he says, have I not spent all this time with you? And yet you still don't know me, Philip. And this past Tuesday morning, it was 3.43 a.m. I wish I could tell you I remember that time because I was awoken by the still small voice of the Lord. I was woken up by a voice. It was not still and small. It was loud, angry, and hungry. And it was my six month old daughter. And I go in her room and I grab her bottle and I start feeding her. I sit in a rocking chair that my wife thrifted six months ago. It squeaks almost as loud as Everly cries. And I'm feeling pretty human. And at almost 4 a.m., life hits me and I feel this weight on me, fear, anxiety. I'm thinking about every meeting you can imagine. I'm thinking about tax day. I'm thinking about this moment. God, I need a word for this group of people, for everyone watching online, and I don't even have a word for myself. And God speaks to me, but he changed his tone and I felt a little bit like Philip. Almost like Abram, I understand everything that's going on in life, I get it. But Abram, have we not spent enough time together that you do not know me? It was almost in the sweetest way, like he said, hey, check my track record. I am faithful. And I just feel today the burden as we prepare our hearts to hear the word, that Jesus would look in Gateway Church and he'd say, hey, Gateway Church, I understand what's going on in the world, but check my track record. It is faithfulness. It is love. It is good. We are taken care of today. If you're feeling a little human in this room, it's okay. He is good. So, Lord, tonight we receive your word. Father, I thank you that you are good to us. I thank you that your track record is faithfulness. Thank you, God, that even when I forget that you come in and remind me that you are still good. So, Lord, we receive your goodness today in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen, amen. Well, we're so glad you're here with us this weekend. Do me a favor. We got a great rest of the service, but turn around, greet somebody, high five someone. Welcome to Gateway Church. Hey everyone, whether you're at a campus, a gathering, or online, we're so glad that you're joining us. At Gateway, we're passionate about helping people believe in Jesus, belong to family, become a disciple, and build God's kingdom. Listen in for some great places to start. God designed us to connect relationally with each other. We have a lot of great opportunities to help you find a community of friends. Here are just a few. To stay up to date with all that's going on, visit gatewaypeople.com. If you'd like to join us in what God is doing in and through Gateway, you can give on our website, our mobile app, or in one of the offering envelopes at any of our campuses. There are so many ways you can discover community at Gateway. You can join a group, attend an equip class, or serve on our build team. To learn more, meet us at Connect Central, text Connect to 71010, or visit gatewaypeople.com. To stay connected with the Gateway family throughout the week, follow us on social media and join your campus Facebook group. We're so glad you joined us. Thanks for being here today. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. You have lifted us up out of darkness. Each man in this circle, God, as we go in to Men's Summit, Lord, we lift up each other as brothers, God. That we are our brother's keeper. Yes. yes. Hey, are you ready? Quiet yeah. spirit on your church. Have your way. You're calling your men to rise up. This is our time. It's our season. We're your sons, Lord. Move mountains in our world. Move mountains wherever we stand, Lord God. 
speak to me and through me. God, you are so good. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You know that God has placed a call on your life to serve the church. God has given you giftings and a heart for people. You may be a student, a pastor, or in a season called the in-between. Let us develop what God has destined you to do at the Gateway Ministry Experience. when we were younger and uh, just thought we would go in as a couple together and uh, just make that declaration together again. I have a two-year-old daughter and I just wanted to do better for her. Have her here, show her, you know, to be in his footsteps to worship God and just to understand that, you know, he's there for us, so it just means a lot. to be here this weekend. Now, I've met many of you over the years at different campuses, hey campuses, um, at our events or conferences. Some of you know me as Pastor Robert and Pastor Debbie's daughter-in-law, which is true. And he'll be back next weekend in the pulpit. Um, Some of you may know me as Pastor James Morris's wife. Also true, that is me. Um, But if we haven't yet met, hi, I'm Bridget. (laughs) Maybe you're new here to Gateway or we've just never met yet, so hi. Uh, I get the privilege of um, overseeing our women's ministry here, so shout out to the ladies. I also get to oversee a few other ministries and departments. Um, We partner a lot with men's ministry. Shout out to my dudes. We've got Men's Summit coming. So if you didn't get a ticket to be here live in person, go online, all right? We still have places online that you can join us there. So do that. Um, Okay, so uh, I do love my job. That's that part of my life. I also am a mom. I've got three kids. They're here. (laughs) They're here tonight. Um, And... Let's see, other things about me. I like to garden. All right, so this is me. Hi, I'm Bridget. Nice to meet you. (laughs) Something fun about this weekend, something special, is it's actually my birthday weekend. (laughs) Tomorrow is my birthday, and y'all, it is like a special gift from God that I get to preach on my birthday. I am not even joking. I'm so pumped about it. I'm just like squealing on the inside, keeping it in, though, keeping it in. Um, So... I'm not sure if your allergies have informed you that spring has sprung, but my allergies have informed me of this. So I have a bottle of water up here in case things get crazy. Um, Okay. So allergies aside, I do love spring. I love summer because I like warm weather. Take me to a beach. Um, But I love spring because it's the season of anticipation. It's the season of expectation. We just celebrated Easter, which is the celebration of Jesus Christ, our new hope, our new life in Jesus Christ. You know, birds are chirping, flowers are blooming. It's a great time of year. New horizons graduations are coming up. Shout out to the grads. You finished strong. And if you didn't finish strong, at least you finished. (laughs) Good on ya. All right, so it's like baby shower season, which side note, my kids have always thought that name is just like hilarious, which it is. It's funny. That's a funny party to be called a baby shower. Um, But we get wedding invitations right now. Like it's the season of love, y'all. 
It's the season of love. And so I'm a girl. I love love. Let's be real. But even more than just like the mushy, gushy, you know, pretty side of a wedding is I love weddings for people watching. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Bridesmaids, I'm watching you. But by far, my favorite are the groomsmen. Why, you ask? Because, hands down, without a doubt, they never fail to level up the level of entertainment for a wedding. (laughs) So a few years after James and I got married, we had some friends getting married. So of course, we're going to attend their wedding, support them. And it was a very, like, formal, proper wedding. Very elegant wedding. And it was in this beautiful church. They had, you know, intricate pews and this elaborate stage with the stairs that go all the way around the front. Y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about here? All the way around the front. So um, James and I are sitting in the pew. It's been a little while because it's more of a traditional ceremony. And we're sitting there, and one of the groomsmen, I mean, this is the side of beyond, right? So he's standing there. And all of a sudden, he starts making these faces. And his faces get, like, really intense. And then he gets really wide eyes, and he puts his arms out like this. (laughs) And he turns to the crowd like Frankenstein. And he goes, I can't see anything. (laughs) I know, what? So James and I are like, oh, it's going down. So we're watching. (laughs) And he, he then starts, like, doing this robotic, like, walk towards the, the stairs. So the, the groom's father, you know, his dad comes running to the edge and is like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come, come, come down, come, come down here. And he's like, I, I can't see, I can't see you. We were like, well, apparently you can't hear either because you are shouting. <laughs> the acoustics in this place are just phenomenal. So he gets to the edge with his robot walk and y'all, I don't know if he was trying to make it down the steps, but it didn't happen. Not the way he wanted it to. So he gets to the edge, and y'all takes one step and goes all the way down the stairs. The dad picks him up, like drags him off to some faraway place, probably never to be seen again after that shenanigan. (laughs) What did he do? What did he do? He did the thing that every wedding planner tells you not to do. Yeah, they're like, Sending the bridal party out. Remember, don't lock your knees. Oh, wait, and it's your turn. Don't lock your knees. What did he do? He locked his knees. He locked his knees. And you know, that's like kind of a big thing. You know, your brother's wedding. Y'all, think about being the bride. You have planned this moment for so long. You got up at what time to make yourself elegant? And your brand new brother-in-law steals the show. (laughs) I know what she was thinking. You are dead. (laughs) Now picture being the groom, you know? You're like, bro, if my brand new wife is at all upset on our first night together, I will kill you. (laughs) And then I thought, man, That was like a moment in their family. That was a big thing in their lives. You know, your brother, your best friend, and you missed his like big day. Because you locked your knees, cut off circulation to your brain, and lost your vision. Sometimes I think we can be in a season. Maybe it's a transitional season. Maybe it's a really great season or a not-so-great season, but we're in a moment, and we can spiritually lock our knees, cut off circulation to the spirit, and lose our vision. And vision does a lot more than just inform us of the situation around us. Vision forms us. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. What we see in our minds shapes the decisions we make, which in turn shape who we are. 
And now, depending on what picture you're painting of your life and of your future, you may not like who you are, where you're going, or the situation you find yourself in. The enemy wants to come steal, kill, and destroy the vision God has given you for the promises he wants to fulfill in your life. So the title of my message is Vision for a New Tomorrow. Now, I need to disclaimer. I'm about to read a big chunk of scripture all at once. But it's church. It's what we do here. Okay? And like, if you haven't read, you know, your Bible in a while, or you just finished a reading plan, and you know, what am I going to read now? I would highly recommend Joshua. It is an incredible book of the Bible. It's very action-packed. It's like an action movie. Till about like chapter 13 or so, and then it turns into more of a documentary. Still good, but I just want to give proper expectations. Okay. So we're going to start in Joshua 1. Start at the very beginning. 1-1 one, one. says, The Lord charged to Joshua. After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, not son of a nun, but just son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I'm giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites. Just put that in your back pocket. We're going to talk about that in a minute. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous. For you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors. I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night, so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua then commanded the officers of Israel, go through the camp and tell the people to get their provisions ready. In three days, you will cross the Jordan River and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you. And then I skip down to chapter three. Three days later, the Israelite officers went through the camp. Then Joshua told the people, purify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do great wonders among you. The Lord will do great wonders among you. Here's what I felt like the Lord said for us this weekend. God has a vision for your life. He has promises for your life, for all of our lives. Our part is to take ownership and partnership of that and partner with the Lord. We don't have to do it all on our own. In fact, it's better we don't. It's better that we partner with the one who promised it in the first place, who envisioned it in the first place. He has given us territory, and he's given us a tomorrow. Now, I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow for you. I don't know if it's going to be three days or 40 years. God knows the times and the terms in which it will unfold. But I do know this. The Lord's promises stand true. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And he has a plan to prosper you. He has a good plan for your life. He has good things in store for you. He thinks good towards you. So point number one is know your territory. So what we just read said, wherever you set foot, you will be on land I have given you. And then God maps it out for Joshua from the north to the south to the east to the west, even the land of the Hittites. 
I picture God taking Joshua up on a high place so he could really see the land. Because, y'all, it was real land. Like, it was a real place that they were going to go into. Wasn't this, like, ethereal idea? So God takes him up and points it out. This is your land. Now, why does God do this? For one thing, Joshua had never had territory before. He had never had land before. He was born into captivity in Egypt. Then he was, you know, taken through the Red Sea. And now he's been wandering for the past 40 years. So they would have, like, set up camp for however long, but that was never their territory. He's never been a homeowner. He's never had a fence. And God is also showing him clearly what is his territory and also what is not his territory. Picture it like Joshua with his binoculars, you know, like looking out over the land. And he's like, ooh, that's a pool. Lord, they have a pool. He's like, yeah, that's not, no, 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 come back over here. Not your land. He's like, oh, they, they have a slide. Not your land. Your land is, look, okay, you get a pool over here. Are you happy now? You know? Clearly defining the boundaries of the territory. God wants to give us a clear territory. And we have, you know, practical, natural territory. And then we have spiritual territory. We have a spiritual inheritance and then an actual, like, place. So for you, maybe it's you're the first person in your family to graduate from college. Maybe you're the first couple in y'all's families that are like, we're going to stay married. This is the vision for our lives. Maybe for you, it's having a home. Maybe that's what the Lord has put inside of you. We're gonna have a home. We're gonna have a family. And this is how we're gonna function as a family. And the Lord gives you a vision for how you're gonna function as a family. He's given us real things that are tangible, And he's given us spiritual things. And knowing what and where your territory is is just as important today as it was back then. So we live on um, a couple of acres outside of city limits. And um, it's like a little country bubble. There's like suburbs around, but we live kind of just in the sticks a little bit. And uh, all of our neighbors like neighbors, because everybody kind of has a little bit of land. All of our neighbors are very country sweet. Like they're very kind. But the type of person who goes out there to live likes a little distance. They like a little separation. I mean, let's be real. That type of person wants to stand in their backyard in their underwear and shoot their guns. So, when we first bought our land, it was all cactus, just cactus everywhere. It was really hard to, like, maneuver the land without just getting all, you know, we came out of there like prickly pears. So, uh, my brother-in-law, Josh, who is way more techie than James or I, uh, had a drone. And he was like, hey, I have this drone. I'll just go get footage of your land for you. Because it was really hard to navigate. Like, where are we going to put a house? Where are we going to put, you know, what's back there? I don't know. I can't see it. You know, we can't get there. So he was like, oh, I'll just go get some footage. We were like, that'd be awesome, thank you. So he gets there. Okay, here's the deal. People who like to shoot guns (laughs) in their underwear do not like drones. (laughs) Apologies all around. A lot of apologies all around. (laughs) So now we are very keenly aware of our property lines, you know? We're like, kids, right here. This is our land. That over there, not our land. This is our land. You can run, you can frolic, you can pee on a tree on this land. (laughs) You go nowhere else. And my firstborn planner, Parker, you know, he's like, wait, what if there's an emergency? I'm like, okay. If there's an emergency, you go to Donna's house, maybe you can go to Bob's house, just unless it's an emergency, you go nowhere. I am giving you authority over this territory. 
You ain't got no authority over on anybody else's territory. Now, I realize that's like a silly example of knowing your territory. But there's actually some spiritual truth to that. Now, maybe you're saying to yourself, I don't know. I don't know where my territory is. Like, I've never even asked that question. Like, I don't know where my territory is. I don't know that I have a vision for my life. I have the best news for you ever today. You can just ask God to show you, and he will do what he did with Joshua. He will take you up on a hill. He'll show you this, this is your promised land. This is the vision for your life. Now, he won't give you every detail of your entire life because, like, we're humans and we'll just totally mess that up. But he'll show you a piece so that you can be obedient and walk into that. And then he'll unveil something else, and then he'll unveil something else so that we can partner with him. That's why I think it says, do not, like, study this day and night. Do not deviate from this. Okay. Point number two is be strong and courageous. The word said, this is my command, be strong and courageous. Now, why is God saying this to Joshua? That was my first thought. I thought, he said, God says this to Joshua three times in the matter of four scriptures. In Bible reading world, that's a lot. So you should take notice, like, wait, why? Why is he saying this? Joshua's not a newbie leader. Joshua is like, a strapping young man, you know? So why is God telling him over and over, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous? Because God knows Joshua's just a human. He's a human like me, like you. And he knows, God knows that Joshua is gonna go into some places. He's gonna have some battles ahead of him, some uncertain times ahead of him. And in those moments when he's seeing his brothers and his buddies fall in war, he's going to need to think to himself, be strong and courageous. Be strong. The Lord told me, be strong and courageous. He was in a new season. Kind of a little daunting. Like taking that many people into a promised land that they've been waiting for for 40 years. It's a big moment. He could have locked his knees and lost his vision. Because those lands that he's been looking at are not currently in his possession, but are being prophesied into his possession. And it says the Hittites by name, which I found really intriguing because I thought, wait, wait, why is it specifically naming the Hittites there? There would have been all types of people groups in there. It's not like the promised land was just vacant, ready for inhabitants, you know? There were people there. So why would it name them specifically? Well... They were known, the Hittites were known, historically, to be a very brutal group of people. Just, they were some bad dudes. And I think that when Joshua was up there, God's outlining the boundaries, Joshua's like, that land? That land? God's like, yeah, yeah, that land. I know who's in that land, and you know who's in that land. And I'm still telling you, That's the promised land. That is your territory. And Joshua's like, huh, then I know what I'm going to have to do to get that, you know? There's going to be some battles ahead of us. Joshua, again, has an opportunity. Lock your knees. No, 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 no. Stay agile. Stay flexible to what God has in front of us. So God tells Joshua, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous three times. What's interesting is Moses told Joshua to be strong and courageous three times in Deuteronomy before this. And then the people say, be strong and courageous. This is like this guy's life motto. Jesus actually says something very similar to his disciples in the New Testament. So right now we're in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, in John 16, 33, Jesus says this to his disciples. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus is telling his disciples, be strong and courageous. 
have an eternal perspective. So we can have an eternal perspective of like eternity, like heaven, but we can also have an eternal perspective of the right here and the right now. We can take authority over the enemy by the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus has overcome the world. Now, I almost named this message Vision for a New Territory. But then I thought, you know, I don't know that's really where we get so hung up. I don't think new territory is as daunting or as just straight up annoying as looking at the same land, hearing the same promises, another prophecy of the same place you've been thinking about and praying about for so long and it just hasn't happened yet. I think that's a little harder than just getting vision for a new territory. I think Joshua could have potentially had to overcome some past disappointment, some past unmet expectations. Think about this. Joshua had been one of the 12 spies to go into the promised land. So now Joshua's actually already been in the promised land before. He scouted out. He was snacking on some grapes in there. And then he comes back. He and Caleb are the only two spies to come back to give a good report. And they say, yeah, there's some big guys in there. They're giants. But guess what? We serve God. And if God is for us, who can be against us? They were so full of faith for the promised land. And it still didn't happen. You know, I've had some unmet expectations in my life. Joshua could have become jaded. He could have let other people's unbelief start getting on him, you know? He could have let other people's fear start seeping into him, and he didn't. He kept a pure heart. He could have let media shape his viewpoint, scrolling through his phone 40 years. Giants in the land, we're like grasshoppers. Unfollow. (laughs) I mean, for real, y'all, what do we need to unfollow? How can we keep our hearts pure to the things of God when it's not looking the way that we planned it to look? He may have had to overcome some insecurities, some past disappointments, some past unmet expectations so that he could keep his heart pure. Have you ever had a time of disappointment? Have you ever had a time when you were like, I'm in the promised land. I am tasting fruit from this. And then for whatever reason, you had to kind of step back out of there. And it's been a while since you felt like I'm in, this is my, this is what, this is where it's at. I'm in the right spot. I mean, Joshua was probably telling other people like, man, we're still eating manna for 40 years. Could have been eating those grapes. Milk and honey. I've had this in my own life. God gave me a vision for my life when I was 15. I was at a youth camp, like in the back. His worship was going and my face was on the floor, y'all. And I can remember. I remember the vision God gave me. And then I remember being reminded of that vision, you know, a couple years later, me being like, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Now it's been years, Lord. It was like two years, but still. And then I remember actually when this building was being built. And I was, it was just basically like concrete and, you know, rebar and stuff. And Robert and Debbie and James and I came to see, you know, how it was going. And we were standing, you know, somewhere up here looking down at this platform. And we were talking about, you know, all the great things that God is going to do in this building. It was just really exciting. It's 2009, I believe. And uh, I remember they were talking, and all of a sudden, I just looked at the platform, and I felt like God told me, you will preach on that platform. And I was like, I don't think so. Yep, no, 
pretty sure I'm not going to do that. And the Lord was like, you will preach on that platform. Uh, James and I were both in business. I was on the worship team. I was in the choir, like going through the process. And I thought to myself, oh, like I'll lead worship. And God was like, did I say anything about worship? And I just kind of was like, here's what I did, y'all. I like locked one knee. I was like, well, you got a lot of work to do then. We'll see how this goes. And then like years go by. Think about that. That was 2009. Years go by. And then the Lord just kind of like unfolds things as time goes by. And that's why one of the reasons why it's really special that I'm standing here right now and it's my birthday. It just feels like a gift from the Lord. Sometimes I've had unmet expectations and the real problem was I just had the wrong expectation. I had my vision. I heard the Lord. I had my vision, and I needed to just, okay, this is the Lord's vision. Again, that's why we have to keep the word in front of us, a lamp into our feet. Some of us are too busy worrying about other people's territory to have real authority over our own. Sometimes we're so busy looking at other people's stuff that we're not really stewarding the vision that God has given us of our own. Luke 1.45 says, Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Not, blessed is she who has seen the fulfillment of the promises he's made to her. Who has believed. And that, that verse is talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus. Think of the road she had to walk to actually see the promises come true. And even then, I'm guessing it didn't look the way that she thought it would. Last week, Pastor Robert did a whole message on the divinity and the humanity of Jesus. It was an amazing message. But he talks about the humanity of Jesus. Well, think about the humans that were with him. Think about his mom and what she had to walk, what road she had to walk. We cannot let past experiences limit our future potential. Because God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. So I said that we live um, on a couple of acres. And uh, the way that our land is structured, we have like our house, and then you kind of go down a little bit, and there's a little pond, and then you go down a little bit. And there's our garden. We have this huge garden, y'all, a couple years ago. It was beautiful. It could have been on the front of like better homes and gardens. It was stunning. It's a little in disrepair right now, but we're getting there. And um, we have some chickens with a big chicken coop. We got like a little homestead thing happening. We started with just wanting our own eggs and it escalated. (laughs) So now we have a whole homestead happening. And so when we go down to the animals, we're like, you know, 50 pound bags, you know. Okay, James does this. I am like, oh, you know. I make it to the back of the ranger. Do you all know what a ranger is? It's like an off-roading golf cart. Is that a good way to describe it, you know? So, um, so we put all of our like gardening tools and the feed in the back of the ranger in their garage, and then we drive down till we get to the bottom. So uh, last year or the year before, I'm losing track of time, I have to like age my children to figure out what year it was. So, so we go down to the back, And we have our big garden with a fence around it, with a gate, because if we didn't, the animals would think it's a free buffet. So we go through the gate, you know, get all of our stuff out of the ranger, go through the gate, and we have all of our raised gardening beds. So like vegetables and fruit, you know, picture that. So I'm sitting against one of these little beds, and I'm weeding. The kids are playing. James is doing something over there. And Bray comes by to get the little basket that we get eggs in. Totally normal. It's like a Sunday afternoon, you know? So she comes and gets the eggs and says, Mommy, I'm going to go, I'm going to go get eggs. She gets the basket. She walks through the gate, shuts the gate, you know, goes out. And uh, I'm just sitting there waiting. And all of a sudden, I hear her screaming bloody murder. And like, I mean, I think as a woman, but for sure as a mom, if you hear your child screaming in terror, you don't like stop to assess the situation. You just, like, take action. 
And I have a little bit of an overactive imagination as it is. <laughs> so in the moment, I turn into like the female version of Rambo. And I've got like a bandana across me, I've got like war paint, I've got, you know, bullet things across my chest. I'm just like, Ugh! all in my mind, all in my mind. And I like run. I, I'm like, I actually, this is not play. I'm like, I actually like jumped over these beds to get to her. So I like get through the gate, I bust through the gate, and she is oh, facing away from me, but she's got her arms up like this. And there is one of our giant roosters kind of like hovering above her, flapping its wings like this. And it's got its nasty talons going. And if you don't know this, roosters are like the raptors from Jurassic World. <laughs> and it's just going to town. And she is screaming, I am running. And if you don't know this about chickens, like, yes, like, they're birds of prey, but everything loves chicken. So if they're trying to escape somebody else or attack something, they always go for the eyes. They go for the vision. My daughter is screaming. I am running. So I, like, bust through the gate, run to her. I, like, run up to her, pick her up. I, like, kick at the rooster, and I'm like, James! James! I like round a bush or whatever, and I'm coming this way, and I see my husband just get through the gate. <laughs> he has much longer legs than me. I'm like, babe, what is your reaction time? <laughs> so I'm just like, duh, duh, you know, get the, get something. So I see him pick up the end of a rake. Like the handle part, the wooden part, gone. Who knows where that is? And all that's left is the rusty teeth. Yeah. I was like, good, get it. So, so I'm rounding, and there's like, oh, I'm seeing some blood. And so I'm like, I'm just mad on top of mad on top of mad. So I'm, I'm running. He's getting the rake. And all of a sudden, I see my boys, Parker and Mitchell, and they're on now on top of the ranger, and they're fist pumping the air, and they're yelling, and they're screaming. It looks like Lord of the Flies up there. <laughs> and all of a sudden, Mitchell goes, that's it, rooster. You've done it. You're nuggets. <laughs> I was like, there ain't going to be no meat left for nuggets when Daddy's done with that thing. He dispatched the rooster. That's a polite way to say, it's no longer here, R.I.P. <laughs> so I've got Bray, and I get her to the ranger, and I look at her face, and y'all, praise God, her face is totally fine. Praise the Lord. She does have some, you know, scratches down her arms. That's where the blood was coming from. And you really, those healed pretty quickly. And the thing that did not heal so quickly were like her internal wounds. <laughs> she was terrified, terrified of the chickens from that point. Oh, it was awful. And like, y'all, we have a lot of chickens, so it's not, it's not a good thing. She, uh, so even when she was teeny tiny, she could barely pick up those like fat hens, you know? And she would just like barely get and drag it around with her. She just loved the chickens before this incident. <laughs> the little babies, you know, peep, 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 peep. She would just snuggle them. After this, she heard the peep, peep, peep. She would like go running and hiding. I was like, baby, you could just... Like, if you have to. <laughs> Done. So, as I'm doing chicken therapy with my daughter, <laughs> trying to get over the irrational fear of chickens, I started asking the Lord, I was like, well, geez, I wonder how many times I've done this, where the enemy comes to attack me. And maybe he doesn't fully take out my vision, but boy, he scares the living daylights out of me. Or he confuses me, and I lose my vision. And then I don't function the way that I'm supposed to function. I'm not walking in strength and courage. I'm walking around waiting for the beep, beep, beep. I'm like, Ugh. where is it? Where is it? I don't want to live like that. That's not what God has for us. So now... When Bray goes to the chickens, I'm like, you are strong. You are courageous. Also, take this stick. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And if anything comes near you that you don't like, you just wallop them. Okay, here's what I'm saying to us today. Be strong and courageous. And when the enemy comes at you, because he will. That's why he's called the enemy. If he were a friend, he wouldn't be called the enemy. So he will come for you. And when he does, you take the sword of the spirit. You take the word of God. You give him a good old wallop. Because he doesn't tell you where your territory lines. He doesn't tell you what your promises are. He doesn't give you authority. He who did not create you cannot tell you who you are. So tomorrow, when you wake up, know your territory and be strong and courageous to partner with God to accomplish everything he's called you to. Align your vision with his vision. And he'll be with you every step of the way. God will do wondrous things in our lives. Things that you look back years later and you're like, how did that work out? How did you turn that around for me? Lord, I don't know how you did it, but you did it. Now, before we close in prayer, I can't have a message like this and not invite you to a deeper level with God. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, if he's not truly in partnership with you for your life, then it's really hard to know what the vision is for your life. You'll have a vision, but it'll just be yours. If you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, why wait another day? Why not make that decision today? Maybe you're sitting at home right now and you're thinking like, yeah, Evan, yeah, maybe. Go ahead and make that decision today. There's no better time. Maybe for you, the next step of your journey of faith is to be baptized. Y'all, it's baptism weekend. We have everything you're gonna need. And maybe you're thinking, well, I was baptized a long time ago. Okay. Have you given your life to the Lord since then? Have you really changed your heart? Maybe it's actually time to be baptized. If the Lord is kind of stirring your heart and you're thinking, I do, I think, I think today is the day. Go ahead and make that decision. At every campus, we have everything you're going to need. We've got towels and shirts and clothes you can wear. Then you can put your church clothes back on. We've got stuff for your hair. Don't worry about that. Don't let those things keep you back from a deeper relationship with the Lord. All right, I'm going to pray for us. So if you'll close your eyes just to take away any distractions. And I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me through this message? Now, this is a question we ask every weekend, but it's an important one. This is the action step. Lord, how, do, how does this change me? What are you saying to me? Is there an area of my life that I have kept to myself and not asked you for vision and I'm still walking in my, on my own in this area? Reveal it to me so that I can now change. If you've never had vision, you can ask him for that. If there's an area that you're not walking in strength and courage, just start today. Lord Jesus, we love you and we are so grateful to be your children. Thank you that you have good plans for us and that you freely give us your love and your vision and that you would be happy, so happy, to partner with us to accomplish all the things that you've called us to. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Will you stand with me? Pastor Bridget just said this. This is our call to action. For our service on the weekends, this is a moment where our altar ministry team, they're going to begin to come forward and maybe something that Pastor Bridget said today, you thought, hey, that's me. I need to claim my territory. I need to realign my vision for what 
Jesus, what God says about me today. And if that's you, I want you to know that this group of people coming down to the front, they love you, they are here, they pray for you. And I think one of the most special things about what we do at Gateway Church is this moment. And if you're not in the room today and you're watching with us online, you can text CONNECT to 71010. And we have a team of pastors who would love to respond to you and pray with you as well. If you're not coming forward to respond today, I do have an announcement for you, like Pastor Bridges said. It is baptism weekend, and I'd love for us, can we give it up for everybody who is deciding to get baptized this weekend? And I just wanna reiterate what's already been said. We have everything that you need. And so if you think, man, today I feel the Holy Spirit nudging me to take that next step, all you need to do when we leave here is you can go out of these doors towards the cafe. You'll see a registration booth for baptism. We'll give you everything we, you need. We have the dressing rooms. We have everything. And the last thing I want to mention, Pastor Bridget said, salvation. If you said today, I decided to give my life to Jesus for the first time, or I want to rededicate my life to Jesus, we want to know about it. And we want to pray with you. So you can also text CONNECT to 71010. Let us know. We would love to know about that as well. Let me pray for you as we leave. Father, I just pray that the word that was preached today wouldn't fall on deaf ears. God, I pray it would land with, on good soil. So when we walk out of here, whether we're going to celebrate baptisms outside, whether we're celebrating somebody getting baptized, or we're just going on with the rest of our weekend, Lord, I just pray that you would be in the midst of it and that we would know our ground and claim our territory for what you say. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you need prayer today, come down to the front. If not, we'd love to see you outside to celebrate baptism.